Hello. You are listening to the Grieving Parents Sharing Hope podcast. We are here to walk with parents on their unwanted journey of child loss, guiding them to a place of hope, light, and purpose, not in spite of their child's death, but as a way to honor his or her life. And now, here is your host, author, speaker, and bereaved parent, Laura Deal. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for Him. I called on your name, Lord, from the depths of the pit. You heard my plea. Do not close your ears to my cry for relief. You came near when I called you, and you said, Do not fear. Lamentations 3, verses 22 through 24 and 55 through 57. Hi, today I want to share something that is based on what a perever wrote about the pitfalls of grief. It was pretty good, so I asked her if I could use this. So much of what you're going to hear from me comes from Libby, Brady's mom, and I have added some things to it. We will face pitfalls on this unwanted grief journey after the death of our child. The valley of the shadow of grief is real and it is big. There can be many different feelings and emotions while on this unwanted journey. And we're going to look at six pitfalls that we can find ourselves in. The first one is fear. Fear can feel overwhelming. We fear for our children who are still here with us, afraid that something will happen to them. We fear moving on. We fear if we move forward that we are moving away from our child. But the Lord showed me one time, because this used to just give me almost an anxiety attack when I would think about that. But seriously, we're not getting further and further away from our child. We're getting closer and closer to them. Every day that we're here, we are getting closer to seeing them again. We fear people will forget our child. That's a big one. We want to hear their name spoken. We want others to remember them like we do. We fear that there is a timeline for grief. People put a timeline on us sometimes, or we put it on ourselves, but there is no timeline. Don't compare yourself to where someone else is, another parent who's lost a child. Don't let other people put a timeline on you. I know for me, I thought for some reason, once I hit that one year mark, things would start to get better. It didn't. So don't put yourself on a timeline. We will grieve our child for the rest of our lives. And it's not going to be this pit that we find ourselves in every day, but we will miss them. The grief will just start to look different as we walk on this journey and we learn how to carry it. People say that time heals, but that's not true with grief. We have to allow that to happen and we have to do what we can to move toward a measure of healing so that we become stronger and learn how to walk in our grief. We have a deep fear of laughing and living life in a way that feels good again. That is not only fear, but we can feel guilty for that. But the thing is, I really believe our children would want us to have joy and to live life. Just think of the unimaginable joy that our children are having themselves in heaven. And if they were here, they would want us to experience joy here until we get there and experience the joy that they're having. We fear our child might not be in heaven, but we don't have all the information to know that. What we do know is that it is not God's will that any perish. We know that God is love itself and that his love is so deep that he made a way for us to be in heaven forever. And we know that he loves our child. After all, he was the one who created our child, formed him or her, and knit them together in the womb. 
we can trust that God did everything possible to offer our child the gift of salvation, including the moment they crossed over from this world to the next. And when that was offered, your child probably realized how deeply they are loved by him and said yes. So we don't have all the information. We also know that God's power to restore is so much greater than the enemy's power to destroy. Think about it. One of God's specialties is bringing life from death. He has the final authority over death. He went to hell and he snatched the keys of death and the grave from Satan. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and he is the end, which means he has the final word. And you can be sure that God did everything possible to make sure your child chose him before it was too late. It may have even happened a time while they were still here on this earth before they died, and you just don't know that. So we can choose to live in fear that our child might not be in heaven, or we can choose to live in faith, in trust, in peace that our child is with him. I highly recommend choosing faith and peace because God's right. Fear brings torment. If you struggle with any of these fears, cry out to God. Tell him your true fears. Let it all out and then ask him to help you hand those fears over to him because God is big enough to carry them for us and he wants to exchange that fear for peace. Fear is such a big thing for us that when I first started this podcast a few years ago, I did an entire series with individual episodes talking about several of the different fears that we face now that our child is gone. They are episodes 12 through 18 if you want to check them out. The second pit that we can find ourselves in is depression and anxiety. This is not something to be shameful of. It does not mean you're not a good enough Christian. It's okay not to be okay. As a matter of fact, that's just life. And Jesus came to help us with that. It's okay to seek professional guidance and help. It does not show weakness to need and ask for help. What many don't realize is that the death of one's child is considered a trauma. And many bereavers, parents who are bereaved of their child, have post-traumatic stress disorder, which is better known as PTSD. Now, we think about people who have been in a war having PTSD, but it is true for those who have lost a child. And it's especially true for those who found their child's body. But that doesn't have to be the case. Just knowing how our child died and playing it over in our minds can cause PTSD. And there's nothing wrong with you if you're struggling like this. You may need some medication for a while also since grief and trauma can cause a chemical imbalance in our brains. If your stomach is having problems or your knee keeps buckling or your thyroid isn't functioning properly, we don't have a problem with having someone look at it and help us deal with it. And the brain is no different. Get help if you need it and don't be ashamed or feel guilty if you're struggling with depression and anxiety. It's okay to get help. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to get help because we can't do this alone. The third one is unexplainable longings and triggers. A longing is a strong, persistent desire or craving and aching, especially for something distant or unattainable. We obviously long for our child who has left this earth. We long to hear their laugh, to be able to give them a hug or to hear them say, I love you. We long to see them doing things that we won't get to see them do. However, we can be thankful that this is not unattainable, but it's only distant as we will see them again someday in a place where there are no more tears, no more pain, and no more separation. You know, something that I thought of, I wrote this song together forever, and you can find it wherever you listen to songs, but 
you know, even if Becca had not gone first, it wouldn't have been enough time with her. If I had lived to be 85 and she'd lived to be 65, it wouldn't have been enough time with her. And so I am so thankful that God made a way for us to be together forever. You are going to get to a point where you feel like you're finally getting somewhere. And then all of a sudden, another wave of grief is going to hit you and take you under. And you're going to think, I thought I was finally better. Take time for yourself when this tidal wave hits you. Allow yourself some alone time to reflect. And you can reflect on the happy time spent together. Write down what made you love and appreciate your child and the positive moments you spent together. Reflect on the good times and you can read them out loud. And then dive into the Bible. I know some of you really struggle with that, but the book of Psalms and Lamentations can be very helpful because so much of those two books are crying out to God from a place of pain and suffering, and that can be helpful. The fourth one is regret. We all have times of regret. If I would have answered that phone call, if I would have seen the signs, if I would have been a better mom, if I would have stayed here longer or gone there first, if I would have woken him up earlier that morning so he wouldn't have been driving so fast to make it to work and he wouldn't have wrecked, if I would have done more, my child would still be here. So many regrets run through our minds and these thoughts can torment us as well. At some point, we have to let them go or we will forever be brought to our knees from the bullying pain these thoughts bring. What is done is done. Think about this. Your child right now does not have any regrets. I don't think that word exists in heaven. Our loved ones, our children are living the best life ever. And they're not dwelling on what we should have done differently that kept them on earth <laughs> instead of being in heaven. Your child has forgiven you. Your child has released you. So the next time these regrets start running around in your head, start thinking about what your child's eternal home is like, thinking about where you are going to join them. Get caught up in imagining what heaven really truly looks like and how wonderful it is. Pull out the song, I Can Only Imagine by Mercy Me and worship God and thank him for the new life he created for our loved one. And I'll, I'll just say, sometimes we can't do that. Sometimes that's just too much. But pray about God, what can I do to stop thinking about these regrets right now? And it is true, one of the things that helps me the most is to think about heaven and to imagine Becca there and what she's doing and how whole she is and how beautiful she is and how happy she is. Why would I want her to come back here to all of this stuff in this world that we're going through? And instead of dwelling on those regrets, dwell on the fact that when you join your child, those regrets will be totally wiped away forever. So why wait until then? Release yourself from them right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help us to release these regrets. The fifth one is loneliness and isolation. We're often torn because sometimes we find that we want to be alone, but at the same time, we don't want to be lonely. And it's easy to find ourselves feeling lonely even in a room full of people because those people around us are enjoying conversations, they're laughing and they're living a normal life while we are still in a painful fog. Be prepared for your friendships to change. Your circle of friends will start to look different because many of those you thought would be there for you just aren't for a lot of different reasons. And those reasons really don't matter because I don't have the energy to try to convince someone that I need them in my life. Just being around other people is not what we're longing for. It's being around people who care and who will allow us to be whoever we need to be at any given moment in our grieving. And this is why bereavers gravitate to each other. 
So I want to encourage you to reach out to support groups, reach out to other parents who are walking the same unwanted journey. And I know sometimes those groups can be hard to find. I know Grief Share is out there and it's a Christian support group and it's for any kind of loss, any kind of grief. And it's for, I think it's like eight weeks, 12 weeks, something like that. So for some people, Grief Share helps. For some parents, it just doesn't. It doesn't go deep enough, and it's hard to find a group of parents that are meeting. And if that's you, I just want to put out here real quick that we do have GPS Hope and Healing groups, and we don't ask for leaders. We look for facilitators, someone who just wants to get a group of parents together to share our kids together and to talk about things with someone who gets it that we can't talk about with other people. And so if you go to the website, gpshope.org, look across the tabs where it says support groups and click on the actual tab support group. And that will give you information if you're interested, what our support groups are, where they are, and how you can become a facilitator. So let's get back to the loneliness here. You will have times that you want to isolate, and that's okay, because sometimes we do need to pull back, and we need to work through this grief by ourselves. But sometimes that can make things worse. This was told to Libby, so I'm going to tell you, put yourself on a two-day rule. No isolating past two days, because then it becomes unhealthy. If you can't get past it on the third day, you need to reach out to someone who's not going to try to fix you, but will be with you, like a friend or a family member or someone who can help pull you out of that dangerous place, like a pastor or a counselor. It is important to remember that you are not alone because there is a community, if nothing else, here at GPS Hope that is with you. And the last one is thinking you cannot go on without your child here with you. It can be hard to get out of bed. It can be hard just to breathe. Has this really happened? Someone please wake me up from this horrible nightmare. You will feel like you cannot go on living another day, but you can. You may feel like you can't go on for another minute, but you can. You may not like hearing this, but God does still have a purpose for your life while you are still here. And you need to follow that purpose until God decides to call you home to join your child. It's all in his timing. Seek God's heart and pray about what he has for you to do that will help others in some way. You may even find it's doing something in your child's honor and memory. You know, our ministry is called GPS Hope, Grieving Parents Sharing Hope, and we love it when we find out about bereavers who have become that grieving parent sharing hope with others. God is with you even when you don't feel him anywhere around. I don't have the answers. I don't understand fully why bad things have to happen here on earth. But one thing I have learned is that God is God and I am not. If I were the one making all the decisions, if I could make God do what I wanted him to do just by praying and having it out with him or talking to him, I would be God. And believe me, nobody wants me to be God, okay? And probably nobody wants you to be God either. I need God to be so much bigger than me, even bigger than what my mind can comprehend. That's part of what makes him God. We are not going to have a lot of the answers that we want while we're here on earth. And we're definitely not going to get answers that make sense or satisfy us. So we just need to put ourselves in God's hands, knowing that when we get to heaven, it's just not going to matter anymore. So while we're here on earth waiting, Let's find time to be with God. Pray, journal, read the Bible and helpful books, listen to podcasts like this one, find a support group. And let me also say, never compare your grief to others. We all grieve in our own way. We're all on our own timeline. Our grief for each one of us is unique. 
When you feel like you cannot live another day, one thing you can do is change your surroundings. Go for a drive. Go be in a church or spend time with a friend, a pastor or a therapist that can help walk you through. Go outside and scream to God. Pray and truly lay it all out to Him. He can take your anger. He can take your hurt and your questioning Him and your doubts. We cannot get through this alone, and we shouldn't try. And this is when we need to fall into the arms of God and let Him carry us. I want to take the next few minutes to share a couple of books with you today that are up and coming. One of them is the book I've been working on for the last couple of years called Reflections of Hope, Daily Readings for Bereaved Parents. Now, I just got what's called a proof copy in the mail, and I was so excited to open that box and see it. I opened it live on Facebook, and Dave also put it on YouTube, so you can see it as a YouTube video. So go check it out on the GPS Hope YouTube channel. And while you're there, subscribe so you don't miss anything that happens on the YouTube channel. I want to get more active on that again. And if you do check it out on Facebook, we have a public page and we have a private page. If you're not in the private page, ask to join the GPS Hope private page and be sure to answer the question so that you'll be let in. There's a wonderful community there where we encourage each other, we hurt with each other, we share our kids with each other. Now I have to go through the book for some final edits and it's a big book because it's daily readings. And the plan is to make it available on Becca's birthday, which is April 13th. Now there's also a web page that gives all the details about the book, along with a place you can sign up to get occasional updates, along with a reminder you'll get sent when the book comes out. Just go to gpshope.org slash reflections, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Now the other book I want to mention has absolutely nothing to do with grief or losing our children. Most of you know that Dave and I live full-time in a motorhome we call the Hope Mobile. And two years ago, we added my daughter's cat. She was moving and couldn't keep her. And so Savannah came to move in with us, and she travels the nation with us. Now, last summer, my creative 10-year-old granddaughter, well, she was nine at the time, started making up stories about Savannah. And they were so good that I got my computer out and we started writing them down together. And I decided we should get them published as a children's book series called Savannah's Adventures. And so this first book is called Savannah Needs a Home. And she is a rescue cat, so this is kind of her story, the beginning of it all. And we're in the process of taking pre-orders for this book to help us pay for the illustrator, the formatting, and the printing of this book. Savannah also has a web page and a Facebook page you can check out. And I will put a link to both of those in the show notes as well. Or just search for Savannah's Adventures. Savannah only has one end, just so you know. I truly believe that this is something fun that God has given me to do that helps give me an occasional break and gets my mind off of the, well, what can be constant ministry of grief. So what I would really love for you to do, if you don't mind, is go to our campaign page and watch the video I made with my granddaughter. She's so cute and she gets so excited in it. And take a look at what's there about the book and consider helping us out by choosing a level of fun gifts we have put together as our way of saying thank you for pre-ordering this first book and helping 10-year-old Elena become an author. This is a Kickstarter campaign, so I'll put a link to this in the show notes. And there is a way to get to it from the website, which is savannasadventures.com. Like I said, this book has nothing to do with GPS Hope, but it's something personal to me that I just wanted to let you know about. And if you don't mind, please share about this with your family and friends. All right, let's move on to our birthday segment. Ian Rodriguez was born on February 26th and is forever 33. Maisha Grimes was born on March 1st and is forever 24. Patrick Palazzo was born on March 2nd and is forever 
2024. Aaron Wright was born on March 3rd and is forever 32. Christian Fofness was born on March 4th and is forever 20. As always, we celebrate the day these children came into the world. It will always be a special and important day in the lives of their families. If you would like to have your child's birthday announced the week of his or her birthday, I would love to be able to do that. Just go to gpshope.org slash birthdays. Fill in the information, including their names, pronunciation, if sometimes it gets messed up because I want to say it correctly for you. Just submit that and your child will be announced. And Dave will also send you an email to remind you to listen that week. I want to thank Libby for her part in what I shared today and for letting me use it. I hope you took something away that will be helpful in learning how to walk out this journey that none of us wanted to be on. And I want to close by saying something about sorrow and suffering. Those two words always seem to be together, don't they? And they don't even begin to describe how we feel after the death of our child. I was having it out with God about this one day. The depth of pain was unbearable. And I knew somehow I had to get past it, that I could not go on living this way in such deep darkness and depression. I also knew I had to be the one to allow myself to release it, but I didn't know how. I know a lot of you may have heard me say this before, but somewhere along the line, I heard or read the words, spiritual blessings come wrapped in trials. And I wrote a note to myself saying, the loss of a child is an awfully deep trial to wrap a blessing in. And immediately, God spoke the words to my heart, I know, because my son died, and it was wrapped in the blessing of you. That was an incredible, precious, kind, gentle, comforting thought to me, and I hope it is to you too. God himself knows deep sorrow based on the death of his own son. And within that deep sorrow, he carried ours as well. So let your sorrow melt into his sorrow and you will begin to see the other side. You will begin to find yourself coming out of that pit. And when you find yourself in that pit of grief again, or maybe you haven't gotten out yet, don't give in to it. Fight your way out. It is so very worth it. And as you do, remember to hold on. Pain Jesus, there is hope.